Shut up and sit down. Hey, everybody, and welcome to Nerd Explaining Podcast. I'm your host, Eric Da Silva. With me, as always, my co host, Jose Romero. What's going on, brother? Oh man, I I, I I had a pretty good day today. I'm not gonna during the day, very exhausting. Uh, you know, I got I got dogs, I got writing stuff. It's a whole thing. But uh, excited for today because uh, I was even surprised. I, I thought we were gonna tell. Oh, you know, everyone's talking about stuff like what if that's a really big draw. But you dropped the dime on me this morning. Like you forget, Titans is coming out today. <laughs> I was like, holy crap! So you made me power drive through <laughs> all three episodes of Titans. Uh, which is not a problem. But, you know, by now, I, I have the mental stability to watch three hours of episodes just to take it all in for the love of the nerd. That's what I do. That, that's, and, uh, yeah, so, the capacity is it, very limited, but I'll give you credit for giving three hours of your time. I, 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 listen, I, nice my time. time my time is worth three hours of time, uh, <laughs> which is uh, – take that as you will, good or bad. But, yes, uh, uh, but I, 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 and I, I know we're going to be – you know, I'm very excited about talking about everything that's going on. How's everything on your end? Good, man. Ready to rock. I did catch Titans. Not all of them. I saw a couple of them. We'll talk about it. You know, we'll talk, the yeah. Show, of course, we'll keep the if. level. Right. Exactly. And you know, just, uh, oh, you know, real, real quick, we could talk about this last week with Venom. That yes. Is a, an, an official date, uh, October 15th, right? Yes, officially. Yeah, that was officially. one of the nerd, nerd nuggets that we had is because we talked yeah. about the trailer and we just today, they said, guys, uh, apparently, um, people don't believe in science. And so since people don't believe in science, we're going to move things back because you can't handle aliens. If you can handle shots, aliens are going to blow your mind. So we're going to move it back to October, which we said would be pro- – if they had to move it any time, October would be better because it gets closer to Halloween. You can kind of play off the horror aspect of it. Mm-hmm. So to me, it's a smart move. Even though I'm hearing rumblings, if things don't get better, they might push all the way to January, which I hope not because I feel like if you push to January, you're going to mess up spider no way home and then those are fighting words and we have to punch somebody so i'm hoping we stick october as a landing yeah it's it's, it's a wait and see you know so and i think the original date was three weeks before so about three week moves it's not a huge move but i mean i, I think shang chi is going to tell the story like that one flops yeah man Sh- Sh- but it, only because they're not doing day and dates to do it if you don't know about shang chi the way they're doing it is right. they're doing strict theater first for like a month and then streaming Right, you know, the, almost that the opposite of well, Black Widow. Yeah, right. That doesn't do well. I think other other studios might be like, well, let's rethink the strategy and move. Give these me out. Eternals. Give so, me Spider Man. Yeah, all. I mean, yeah. If the first Domino falls, it's it's all the way yeah. down. So who yeah. knows? But let's you know, positive thinking. It's whatever. It is what it is. I know. It comes out when it comes out. What exactly. do you do? What do you do? So, yeah. but. We got some good nerdy nuggets this week. Yes, Not we do. Them. We got a few good nuggets. But the ones that are there are very good. Yeah, They're man. very good. So, so let's uh, transition to that because I got I, we got a fun one here because cool. we love ourselves to talk about this um, many times. And, of course, that is from Fast and Furious. Ah, uh, how can you not? For, for better or worse, the, ridicul- the ridiculousness that is Fast and Furious. So a story broke out. Um, and, again, this is just... Nothing's confirmed. Just people were talking, including Vin Diesel, you know, had talks about what to go, where to go now from from the series and the last two remaining installments. Anyway, you got you got to preface that when Fast Eight came out, everyone was talking it when they're like, "What do you do next?" And if somebody I forgot who said it, maybe it was Tyrese, maybe it was Vin Diesel, but somebody said, "I don't know, space maybe," and we got space car. So clearly, whatever shit talking you're doing, there's a fifty percent chance it might end up in the movie. Right, and and so what what they're talking about now, and it's just just talking. It just means nothing. But sure. they're talking about introducing the element of time travel into the series, which <laughs> I gotta say, you know what? Put his ass in a DeLorean and let's do this, man. Because I, I, for some reason, I kind of like this idea. I don't know why, but it works. It's fast nine. It's okay, so, time travel. Okay, it's so batshit crazy that it it kind of works. In a way that, uh, like, I, uh, let me tell you something. I hate the Fast and the Furious series. Hey, n- <laughs> I, everything that everyone loves about it, I look at it and I'm like, I, the voice of Heath Ledger's Joker pops in my brain. Like, everything burns. Like, just set it on fire. Nothing. But I understand <laughs> why people like it. It is it is so over the top and so goddamn ridiculous that it is literally, like, 
I'm going to block off the world for two hours and I can't do heroin, but I can watch Fast and Furious <laughs> for two hours and forget everything else exists. So I get the appeal. I, Hobbs and Shaw, exception. I love Hobbs and Shaw. And I got to give credit because of The Rock, Fast and Furious 5, because they go to Brazil. That's the, those are the two things. Hobbs and Shaw, Fast 5, everything else, steamy pile of garbage. I'm sorry. Oh, but you gotta, you gotta admit the time travel element. Could yes, be it, right? it is. I, it, I don't think they're gonna do that because that's just even for them. I know this is kind of a weird statement. That's going too far, even for this franchise. Is it? Is it? It, it, it kind of. I mean, I get it. I listen. Space. I, <laughs> what if? What if they did time travel? I, to, but, to me, to me, Transformers is more realistic. Than what if they did time realistic. travel, but in a way you didn't expect it, where they think they're time traveling to the past? But it ends up becoming like Planet of the Apes. Where just think of Vin Diesel on the beach, looking at the destroyed Statue of Liberty, going, "You animals, you did it! Damn you, family!" <laughs> I, I, I'll raise you that one because it's not that it wouldn't be interesting. I just, they're not capable of doing this right in this version of Fast Nine Tan Travel. Right. Given the fact Vin Diesel's practically Superman. Someone's gonna die, and Paul Walker dies again. I don't know. He's gonna go and spin around the earth, flying around, and reverse everything back to where it was. That's exactly what this series will do. And that's that, a travesty. Uh, I, I, I kind of hope that not only do they do time travel, but maybe they do their own version of the multiverse where all of, all of Fast Nine crashes into Marvel and they become like Marvel characters. Like, give they me, already are Marvel characters. So you know, I mean, yeah, it's stretch. I mean, exactly. So, like, Make Vin Diesel Captain America and and Paul Walker is his shield because he's dead. So he just kind of takes some bullets. And then you have uh, The Rock as the Red Skull and you have John Cena as Bucky. Like, give me that. And I'm like, you know what? Who fucking cares at this point? Let's just do things. I, I, I'm okay. Like, if you're going to go time travel, up the ante. It's not time travel. It's multiverse, time travel, franchise mishmash. Give me everything at this point. Like nothing matters. Well, up is down, left is right. Everything is. Oh God! Why did they go to space and ruin everything? Um, no, they made it better. No, no, they didn't. <laughs> Trust me, you didn't see it. They did not make anything better. Um, it could have been cool, but again, this they, they have great ideas. They just don't execute any of them. <laughs> You know, well, so, no, no. They have great ideas, and then they execute it exactly the way they think it works, instead maybe. of how the way it works. Like cars <laughs> can't enough. go up or, or catch a rope because they don't have thumbs and arms, and they can't go up. A, no. And magnets, you can't reverse the polarity. There's a way you saw, it shoots out. That's not how magnets work. Exactly. Magnets attract, but they don't. So it's just re goddamn ridiculous. Oh but God. you know, after after what they did in F nine. Time, why not time travel? Time travel, Island of Dr. Moreau, animal human hybrids, do everything. I, I, don't, I literally do not care. Just do everything as well. Catch ghosts, <laughs> be the Transformer. Like, like I, uh, I, I'm okay with the Transformers idea. And I'll leave it at that. It is what it is. But listen. Fight a dinosaur. Now, now, that's what God, I'm saying. <laughs> it's sad that now I'm like anticipating the announcement of the next film just to see exactly what they're going to do. Because I am curious how far they can take this, man. It's like... I, I, I don't know. I, I God, oh, you know, Vin Diesel. I yeah, hate you. And I love you all at the same time, dude. I, I, I really I'll do. I'll stick with the hate. Period. Uh, <laughs> you know, Vin. I, I I appreciate you as Groot. Uh, I have a special place in my heart for all the Pitch Blacks. You know, I know it's a failed franchise, and that's where you're doubling down. Pitch, don't put an S there. Pitch Black. Pitch Black. Yes. Oh no, but there's also Chronicles of Riddick, which no, is an no, extension no, no. of the Pitch Black universe. Pitch Black. That's. Don't introduce <laughs> just pitch black. Let's just leave it there. Okay, no more, please. <laughs> anyway, let's move off. I, I, I need to, I need to cleanse the, the palette, if you will, to something much more interesting than Fast Nine. That is Doom Patrol, which dropped yeah. a teaser, well, like a trailer, uh, coming at HBO Max on September twenty third. I know it's funny because, Eric, I didn't know, because we've talked about this show, not in detail, but I assumed you being a high and nerd that you are had already seen Doom Patrol, but... I saw season one, right, not season two. two. Right, and you told me that last week. I'm like, whoa, I thought you had seen it. So, I'm, that But really I plowed through it. I plowed no, through no. it just in time. I know you trailer. would. I know course, you yeah. would. Uh, yeah, I had no doubt about that. I'm just surprised <laughs> it took it that long. 
you know, everybody's got a bad day in the office. Fair enough. So, do the, the trailer three dropped. It looks bonkers as I. The Brotherhood it to. of Dada. Let me tell you something. I I read the Brotherhood of Dada. I this in the entire Doom Patrol series is not a combination of so many. It is like ninety two percent all Grant Morrison's run on Doom Patrol, which okay. it was because of what Grant Morrison was doing. He was one of the people that helped DC create the Vertigo imprint line, which is like adult concept comic books, which is like that Sandman and the John Constantine, Swamp Thing, and Doom Patrol. Those were the big lead-ups. That This shit led, led to itself like Preacher. You, if you're a fan of Preacher, you could not have had Preacher without Doom Patrol. And I, what struck me as really amazing is that two seasons of, of Doom Patrol and – there was never a real superhero fight. It's more emotional pathos and like discovering your own psyche and realizing we're all fucked up and you can't really trust anybody, but it's just the effort that counts and not the, like it, it made me feel like I was reading the old school. And it was just this, like uh, I was amazed how true they stayed to Grant Morrison's idea of what doom patrol should be like. And so, uh, as much as cool as Mr. Nobody was, the Brotherhood of Dada is uh, is like right up there with Mr. Nobody. I felt like season two, uh, even though the whole the whole her whole psychic entities in in the in the mind of Dorothy um, was very much in comics, it wasn't my favorite arc. But the to if they bring in the the the. Uh, the 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 scissor men of scissor when they cut people out of reality oh it's so good so I'm really excited I hope we get like season was 15 episodes season two was nine because I, I didn't know this you told me they had to stop because of COVID so I'm hoping season three is back to 15 because it's it's so worth it and I'm, I I I don't feel like enough people talk about Doom Patrol or give it credit even though I will say this into our main topic that we have going on today. With what if, uh, when what if came out, the Marvel account created a hashtag what if, and Doom Patrol started trolling the what if account. <laughs> you know this, and so they started doing the hashtag what if Marvel made stuff that wasn't campy and just taking shots. I was like, oh man, this is this is great. Thank you, Doom Patrol, for being the internet troll you should be. <laughs> God bless him. You should watch the show just because of that. Yeah, I mean, oh it, yeah, it's great. But you're right. And it's Brendan Fraser, good. Brendan Fraser, yeah, like, amazing in it too. I like, I like. He's eating again a lot apparently. Um, so good for him. <laughs> and Sino Man get to eat like everybody else, you know. And but you're right. It is an underrated show. I mean, it no really one talks is. about it really, even amongst the nerds community. They don't talk about it as much. And I think big part is because it was in the DC app. Right, which, I think that held it back, just like just like the the Harley, the Harley Quinn cartoon. A lot of people exactly. now they're yes. catching up to it, but it mm-hmm. look where we are now versus when it was first released. And I feel right. like Doom Patrol is one of those things that should be talked about because it really is. I, I I know what turns people off is because the show is meant to feel janky and and barely getting by. Because if you watch the show, it's addressed like this is the reason why is because this guy isn't a super scientist. He's a guy who has big ideas and then it kind of figures out what to do with what he has available. So it, it's meant to feel run down. It's meant to feel like patched together and just enough to get by. But that's the point. And I think when people saw that, they thought, oh, it's a production thing. Like they didn't have money to do it as opposed to this was an aesthetic choice made. And once you get past that, you're, you're in. Yeah, and a lot of this, this show is kooky. Let's just be honest. Oh, yeah. This, is, this kind of show, I get it, won't appeal to the mass audience. It just won't, which is fine. Uh, we saw that, you know, you've seen the numbers for, for Suicide Squad in terms of box office. People just yeah. don't gravitate to that kind of stuff that's different and unique. They which just, sucks. Which sucks. we even talked it, about it, it. Yeah, exactly. It is what it is. But this show, it's, it's so good. It's just, it's so out there. It just makes sense despite the fact that it's just, it's just bonkers, right? If I could say anything, if I could say anything about if you were having trouble kind of getting your mind around Doom Patrol is, do you remember how... Back in the day, people would accuse comic books of being Batman 1966. Very campy, very silly. The whole concept of Doom Patrol is everything campy is real, but it's deathly dangerous. Like it is not only is there like a like a polka dot man, but his polka dots are an interdimensional virus that are eating you. So, I mean, what better way to explain Doom Patrol than that? Like everything that's silly about comic books. 
they not only double down as like we're doing it, but they're gonna go, and this is why it's so fucking dangerous, and right. it's so good. So yeah, exactly. and and it gives it an edge too. It's ha- absolutely, it does have an absolutely. Edge. It's, yeah, it's not campy at all. Not at all. Um, it's it, really it, in depth. It, like, like it I, really is. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I sometimes you, you think like, oh, you know, maybe I could show this to a kid who's like maybe like twelve. Like you need to be twenty one. You need to have uh, had a, a near death drug experience. Uh, you need to uh, have know what failure tastes like. Then you can watch Doom Patrol. That's the only way you're gonna appreciate it. Exactly. So um, I'm, I, I got a feeling it's gonna continue to be underrated, which is fine. Listen, I, I watch it. I, I enjoy it. I'm sure we'll talk about it in a month Absolutely. and a half when it comes out in depth. So can't wait for that. Uh, last nugget here, Eric, and this was an interesting one. Um, Batman and Robin. Well, let's just focus on Robin anyway. When right. Just, it came out recently that he came yeah. out as a bisexual. Uh, Tim Drake Robin, because I know Tim there's Drake many Robin. Robin. Tim Drake Robin, oh, which right. is the third Robin, right? Correct, correct. So he's coming, obviously, the LGBT community's, you know, thumbs up. Good for them. It's interesting. I, th- I think Robin is one of those characters that everyone always assumed was gay. Or well, whatever it's weird, it's, because it's, 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 it's the one the 60s, that everyone you know? thought that he was gay is actually Dick Grayson, who's a huge poon hound. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it was always weird. Like, oh, he's gay. No, he's not. Trust me. Have you watched Titans? That dude ain't gay. So, oh, well, no. That, that, those versions, are, no. Which would, but that's, but that's exactly how he is in the mm-hmm. comics, in, in sense of like his uh, sexuality. Uh, Tim Drake, He's had girlfriends before, but the big reveal was he's bisexual. Like he's kind of like had that sort of like flashbulb moment. It was like, oh, I, I think I am attracted to guys as well. And I mean, it makes sense. You can't spell Robin without B-I. So, I mean, that's kind of a bit, you know, it's a good move for, for them to kind of incorporate that Shay, all together. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I, listen, I, I always thought like out of all the Robins, uh, I always thought that Dick Grayson is the one who had it, who had a, better character development about who he is as a person. Uh, Jason Todd has a character who had the biggest fall from grace. Uh, I always felt like Tim Drake was the, was the most realistic of all the Robins in terms of who he is as a character. And what is more realistic than living your life the way you think it is. And then something happens and you have to kind of take yourself into account and go, is this part of me? And where, let me, do I follow those interests? And then you go from there. And then you have, uh, Damian Wayne, which is the newest Robin, who's Batman's son, who uh, Tim Drake is a great detective, but Damian Wayne is just a fucking fighter. Like he's a brawler and, and like the deadliest of brawlers. That like like uh, you know the thing about whatever the most dangerous hitman is that is Damian Wayne. So I feel like if anyone would be comfortable enough with his sexuality, it'd be the kid who was also a really good detective because he'd figure shit out and so he'd look into himself and go. Huh, okay, well, let's follow this path for a little bit and see what happens. So I'm I'm actually really happy, and I think it's a, a great addition, and it totally makes sense to his character. It doesn't feel shoehorned in. It doesn't right. feel contrived or anything like that. Yeah, so, it, yeah. It's not like a, a pandering situation all that. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it, yeah, it feels fine. And again, it's not, and, and it, it kind of went, I'll say unnoticed, but usually when something this happens, there's in some percentage of uproar somewhere on, on social media. Well, you know what? Like I said, on the radar, which is with, good. That's a good thing, though. You know, with Tim Drake no being, reacting. yeah, with Tim Drake being the third Robin, uh, and him, his character being who he is, I think it all sort of makes sense. It's so like when they revealed Iceman from the X Men being gay. Nobody's like, well, there was a small because you're like, you can't do that. But people are like, <laughs> guys, look, the history's kind of been there. He's just right. been afraid to admit it, and now he's okay with it. It's so like he, it's like you saying, always knew he was, and he finally came out. I was like, all right. exactly, exactly. Good for you. Robin yeah. just had that good moment. Yeah. It was like. You know what? Uh, I, I may not wear the elf boots and have uh, the short shorts, but uh, I kind of like a dude, and that's cool and good for him, man. Is it? Like I said, if it would have been Tim, Dr- if it would have been like uh, Dick Grayson, I would have been like, that's not the guy. But Tim Drake totally makes sense, to, uh, right on point with the character, and I, I hope it, he doesn't become a derivative. I hope it just becomes an, an extra layer to how cool this guy is. Right, no, I agree. So that's that's a kind of like interesting story. So I like that one a lot. So and there you nuggets. Know, uh, I, I just hope there's never a bad pun about going into the bad cave. That's all I'm saying, guys. I'm just hoping they keep they keep it classy, DC. Keep it classy. Uh, Low hanging fruit. I, I like I'm saying, let's digress. I'm just I'm just keeping it classy. <laughs> so those are the nuggets for this week, Eric. So cool. Let's talk about like, a lot of stuff to talk about in terms of a lot of stuff. Yes, a couple of shows and a movie that I got a chance to see uh, yesterday, last night. I know. Uh, I think you were looking forward to it, and that is, of course, Ryan Reynolds' uh, free, free guy. guy. Sorry, free guy. Right. So, yeah, man, this was a fun Tell me. ass film, man. It oh, really so was. I really enjoyed this, and and essentially because we we know the plot, right? He's, he's a character in this 
G- kind he's of the G- NPC GTA character kind of in a video game, right? Yeah, exactly. And then you know, obviously, you know, it's gonna get deleted and some other, other factors come in there. But either way, um, sure. but yeah, dude, did this? I mean, it's Ryan Reynolds being Ryan Reynolds. Fine, of course. What else is new? Yeah, it's such a good time, dude. And it's cool because as a gamer, you know, we're both gamers and stuff, you know, and just the world they create. It's just so so many Easter eggs. You familiarize yourself with, you know, the med. Awesome. Pa- he's taking med packs and he feels better after he takes one and <laughs> the missions and all that. And, and it's, it's a scene where someone, some guys uh, kill somebody. He's teabagging him. So and, and which is great. That's a Halo move. That's a Halo move. That's a Halo move. That's way back with two, circa 2004, 2000, 2003, whatever. So it's been like a shout over, out red over, and blue. Over 15 years since teabagging has become a thing in video games. So to see shit like that was really cool. But you don't have to be a gamer to enjoy the movie, which is great. That's awesome. You know, That's there's great. a really cool story there. I mean, dude, it is so entertaining, man. It really is. It's light, but whatever. Good. But it's funny as hell. I mean, that. I mean, the the, the movie looks like it's it's just something like. Just like if you go to Fast and the Furious to turn your brain off from reality, this is like one of these where like, I just want to feel good the whole time and laugh yes. at things. that. I, yeah. And if this, it looked like that, and I'm so glad they didn't drop the ball. I was a little worried because they kept getting pushed back, and it, it was right. like one of those movies that Fox was going to release before the Disney merger, and nobody was going on. Kind of like New Mutants for a little bit. Like it was in that weird gray zone. Right. And so I was like, I saw New Mutants. It was okay. Uh, it, wasn't, okay. it wasn't It wasn't. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't. It, 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 no wasn't part of me go, yeah. nope. Yeah, but no part of me thought like, I can't wait to watch it again again you know oh, but like free bird i was like this looks good but i've been hurt before so no, i don't this, this know this is a it's so, it's so much fun the awesome. action looks That's great so cool. and this i mean because again it means more for your gamer you're going to get more out of sure. it of course oh yeah so, you know but a lot of the jokes aren't related to the games for the most part it's a great uh, cameo by um oh my god i can't remember. was the guy magic mike the god I can't channing, channing tatum channing tatum i didn't know who was in it he's in it he's that's amazing. great. There's another cool cameo at the end. I don't want to spoil it. That cameo is fantastic. Do, 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 does, Ryan, does Ryan Reynolds and, and Channing Tatum have a, like a hot off? Like, like, oh, can you do this? Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> oh, I don't know about this over here. It would have been cool. But they do have a great interact. Oh, man. Again, I don't want to say anything. But there's a really cool back and, with, back and okay, forth between cool. them. And I awesome. think that they're in together. Uh, another, like I said, another great cameo towards the end of the film, which is fantastic. And it's just a lot of fun, man. I just... And, and it's funny because you, you mentioned that you thought it may not be good. And I, I thought right. the same thing. But I did read... Um, about early this week that, you know, the, the Disney didn't do a same day release and with Disney plus and this one, because the test screenings, okay, it was like a year and a half ago. This movie's been in the show for a while. Right. Yeah. And obviously COVID fucked that up, but, um, the test screenings was so good. Disney's like, you know what? We want to try to make this a franchise. They really like oh. what they saw, which is why they okay. decided to stick with just the theaters, which makes, right. me, makes me think, obviously they didn't think that highly of Black Widow. Um, yeah. Well, or, or, or I, Jungle yeah. Cruise, but that which is understandable. Well, but right. I mean, but again, you know, if, if you had that much confidence, because as, as per the words, they have so much confidence in this film, they didn't want to just put it in the theaters only. So, that, but that being said, knowing that, I was like, okay, I'm gonna expect something good here, um, because of that. So yeah, dude, it's legit. Then go watch it. Perfect. If you watch it when it comes out, of, whatever. Oh. If you can go to the theater, go to the theater. But if you can watch it, obviously, at some point at home. Only yeah. because you brought Channing Tatum, I gotta ask you this: based on the feel of the movie and seeing Channing Tatum, which I feel like we haven't really seen him in a movie in a couple of years. He's done some other side projects, That's you know, stuff, like the like the animated America the movie on Netflix and that kind of thing. Do you feel now, after seeing him, you can see my point of Channing Tatum being Flash Gordon? Not based on what he did here. Ah, oh, that doesn't say what he I did was, that- was great. It's just like it's just hilarious, but I didn't see that tone in Flash Gordon. You know, but, could you see Flash Gordon being like this tone? Because Taito Watiki is working on it, so it could be. It's a, It's going to be a funny kind of light, brisky kind of movie. Just so because he's also in Free Guy. Um, oh, he's really? Yes. Awesome. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, that's yeah. right. He did the. Yeah, yeah, right. He yeah. did the, 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 the. Him and Deadpool did that. The, yeah, the trailer yeah, 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 thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's okay. the CEO of the, of the developer of Free of the Free, of free City. Is the okay. name of the game. Um, okay. But he, he's great. He's the villain of the movie. But yes. Yeah, so, uh, I don't know. I just because he's it's out there. You got to see it. I'm like, just, okay, all right. Yeah, because well, he, he's the avatar it, of a character, you know. So, yeah, so the character's kind of a nerdy. So when you know, when, when I watch it, we will see. go more in depth. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, now we know. Yeah. But you're saying two thumbs up for sure. Like oh, definitely, absolutely. definitely worth absolutely. a watch if nothing else. Uh, definitely, uh, definitely watch at the theater. It's fun, man. Cool. And it cool. looks great. Awesome. You know, it looks fantastic. So a lot of special awesome. effects. So big screen is the optimal way to see it. But I get it. Obviously, it is, it is what it is. So whatever. Um, but must watch. So. That being said, it is time for us to ponder the question, what if, of course... Who touched me? (laughs) (laughs) So we got Disney Plus dropping the newest series animated style, though. And I'll say that before we get into anything, 
I am curious how this show does because there's three things people are allergic to is foreign language films because they can't read subtitles or they don't want to read subtitles. They're allergic to documentaries, unfortunately, and they're allergic to animated shows. They really are. I know. Um, so this being animated, despite the fact that it's Marvel, I'm really curious what people, if people are going to watch or not, I don't know. I don't think they are, to be honest with you. The hardcore us, we will, obviously. Sure, obviously. But let's see. That That's, you know, we'll, I'll see if I can dig up those numbers later on. Um, but yeah, so it came out, Eric. So I'll let you take lead here. What did you think about the first episode? Dude, I, 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 I've seen it twice, and I felt the same way I did when I texted you as soon as I finished watching it. It reminded me of how much I miss a good Marvel movie. It was fun. It was, it, it, it was, it was light. There were stakes. And I love the fact that just at the beginning, you had the classic Marvel cinematic universe intro. And at the very tail end, it became like animated strokes, like uh, coloring. And I was like, Oh cool. I like this. And Everything from like just hearing Jeffrey Wright's voice, which mm-hmm. Jeffrey Wright is he's getting, he, he, he's getting to to like Morgan Freeman level with his voice. Like he yeah. knows how to. It, I could just listen to a guy talk forever. It's like a delivery. It's rec- very recognizable, recognizable oh, voice. He's great. Yeah, and we'll so see good. He's Commissioner Gordon, that's right, Batman. Yeah, and, and I love the fact that when they're showing you the universe, they they very briskly almost like how james gunn does it in suicide squad they put you right into the moment like it's here this is what's going on Mm -hmm. and they take you right to the scene where you know what's going to happen and then that one choice and it's nothing nothing major it's just no i'll stay in the room And, and and i love that little moment of like his voice when he goes right there that's the moment that it changes everything i was like holy shit i love i I got i got a little ticket like oh what's gonna happen next and then everything from that point forward it, like made sense to me. I, like none of it was like that's weird. Like it, it, it just was as organic and as fluid. I actually feel like the action sequences was better than the first Captain America, the first Avenger. Like I, I, I think we talked about. It. I was like, mm-hmm. I wish that in first Avenger, Captain America moved the w- moves the way that Ca- uh, Captain Carter does because she's a badass. Like it was like. I think you and me were ta- having a question about, like, did they make her stronger than actual She's Captain like America? Motorcycles and flinging them like it was paper. So it was like, well, okay. he's done that. Like, if you watch, if you watch the beginning of Age of Ultron, he did that too. I don't remember. I'm trying to remember if he did or not. I don't know if he picked up. Maybe he did. I don't know. It's been a while yeah, since he picked up. Yeah, I mean, listen, it's not the best one, but you know, I, there's here, and I, 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 I'm firmly in the plant of like they've done enough of these Captain America movies where his strength level is understood. Like she didn't do anything harder than I don't know holding a helicopter or falling from a building and landing on the shield to take the impact. Like if you can walk away from those two things, you could flip a car. You could like I, I she can pick it up, but she could flip. It's a judo move. You know, it's not <laughs> a lot of effort. It's more of a pivot. That's how physics works. But. Uh, but I, everything from like uh, from the stuff that you know to the way the way where it deviates, where we get stuff like the Hydra Stomper, which is fucking dope. I loved all that. Um, I love the the little like winks and nods to our reality, like when Bucky almost falls off the train and she catches him. He's like, "Whoa, you almost tore my arm off." I was like, ah, "Cool, I like it. It's nice." Um, but to me, the the big thing was the the finale, the conclusion, the third act, where. Instead of using the the terrorist act to power up weapons, because of Agent Carter being so effective, it sort of like made the Red Skull up his game about what he wanted to do with the Tesseract, and he decided, I'm going to summon uh, um, a, uh, the, an avatar of Hydra from beyond the stars. And when he, the 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 portal opens, these giant like uh, like uh, octopus tentacles come out, and if you've seen. The uh, the uh, the to me, I was like, did he find a real life version of what the Hydra symbol is? Because the Hydra symbol is a skull with octopus arms. So I thought, oh fuck, maybe it's like a real version of like he like the reason why they chose that symbol is because he found it somewhere in Norse mythology, and that's what he's trying to summon is the actual Hydra monster, which would have been cool. And then I started thinking like. Are they trying to insinuate this is maybe uh, Shuma Gorath, which is rumored to be the big bad from uh, uh, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness? But Shuma Gorath is kind of like Starro, where he has a big giant eye, and he doesn't eat. He feeds off psychic energy, and he corrupts. Uh, okay. So I was like, it's not that. Then I started thinking, maybe it's the the, the Basilisk that uh, Guard the Galaxy fights in the beginning of Guardian Galaxy 2. 
because remember they said this is an interdimensional being that's feeding off these batteries. So it's not an alien, it's interdimensional. So it could be a version of that basilisk that they fought. There's many options. I like how they kept it vague so it, 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 it could, maybe it's one of these, maybe it's something could be different. You never really got to know. I thought that was awesome. Uh, and then, uh, you know, how even though reality's changed, you still have those parallels where whoever has a super soldier serum will sacrifice themselves to save the world and then somehow many years in the future get brought back into our current day, which they did at the end as well. Right. Almost how Loki comes out at the end of the, at the beginning of Avengers. That's how it, it, it ends up. I, I like the idea where she came out of the portal. She had chunks of, of, of space tentacles all around her. And she comes out like, huh, huh. Uh, I thought it was super cool. Uh, one of the illusions I thought was kind of interesting was, you know, everyone's saying, is she Captain Carter or is she really Captain Britain? Uh, because in, the big thing is in Captain Britain, uh, you can either choose the sword or the shield as a type of Captain Britain. Are you the protector or are you the warrior? And the fact that she had both, I go, is that an illusion to that? Like when she got sucked in, I thought that she was going to end up in the the, the, the the Starlight Citadel, which is the, the headquarters of where all the Captain Britons are. So the fact that she came back out with like no reference to that, I'm like, okay, so let's see what's going to happen here next. But overall, like super fun, enjoyed all the references. Uh, I love the animation. Looks almost like reality, but just at, like off. And I, but I like the voice acting was solid. The animation was super smooth. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm into. I'm a fan. I'm looking forward to the next episode. Uh, definitely a must watch for me. Um, I'm not as high on as you were. I thought it was good, um, but not great. It was, fi- it was fine. Um, I was expecting a little bit more in terms of this what if, and I think we're gonna get it. I know the next episode does a lot more than what this does, and I heard the third one does as well. Well, it's a, it's the intro episode. You can't go like so bananas. You have to kind of show people how this could work, and then you slowly yeah. go a little bigger, a little exactly. bigger. So, I mean, but with any anthology kind of series, there's always you know the, the the great ones, a couple of shitty ones, and a couple of mediocre ones. That's like that's usually the mo of any of these type of shows, right. right? So it is. This could be one of the mediocre ones. It was fine. Like, I just. It was cool that I see her. She's Captain Carter, but it kind of almost followed the same beats as the first adventure, right? And DV, but that's a it, whole but lot. it's meant. But, it, but well, you're right. You're, it didn't. Uh, but but I want I like I want to see more DV, and I think we're gonna get that. I, I think the next one is yeah, Black Panther, but, and also that's gonna deviate substantially. And I heard his characters come in. The characters are different than what we've seen. But think of it like like think of it think of what you see in Iron Man versus what you see in Endgame. Mm-hmm. Iron Man is really fucking grounded. I, it's the, the 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 your your extension of this belief is you can build a suit that gives you all these tech powers, but the tech powers aren't ridiculous. You get to fly, you get super strength. Mm-hmm. It's almost like wish fulfillment, like a Superman, if if you will, that kind of thing through science. And they kept it there. You can't you can't start off with like an Infinity War as your first movie because you feel like what the fuck's going on? All this is crazy. So I feel like especially when you know we we, we talked about this a few episodes ago episodes ago about are people ready to handle the concept of a multiverse and so i feel like you got to show them the small little changes first and then get bigger and bigger and bigger this is almost going to be like the first 10 years of marvel fast tracked in nine 30 minute episodes because you they're going to catch up a little much faster than who knows what the faces are but i think this one was a this was date one I mean, where you just cool. got a little kiss at the, at the end of the night, and that's it. You're not going to sleep with them yet, but you're just getting to know them. And that's that's what this is. I felt like they were doing. I, a friend of mine had a, had a good idea about this, and he put it perfect. Like, if this is soon the first part would have been her, you know, which it was, her getting the powers, right? And then that, that moment right. changed. And then just kind of maybe going th- really fast with the initial story, the first Avenger, right? And then mm-hmm. really tell a story of after that. Of her with disabilities, and that would have been a little more interesting. Give us another story with her, not just give us beat for beat what we had from the first Avenger. So, mm. something a little more out there. That's how, I mean, that's I, I said, you know what, that makes sense to give something a little bit really different with a different character. And she's age, she's Agent Carter now, whatever Captain Carter, right? It's not Captain America, so don't give me a Captain right. America story just with someone, just a different person. It, that, that's not enough for me. This is a what if, and this really changed. Like we're gonna get zombies later on. That's cool, right? Right, but like, you're, but I feel like you gotta. You, it's a graduate. I don't you think could, so, that's, you, because people. I, think, I don't think because this is this, the, the, the casual fans ain't watching this. Let's, let's be honest. It's gonna be the hardcore fans, and we all know what's going on with the multiverse. Well, there's nothing's gonna surprise us. We run it. Just I, I, give it. Give us. We we see what Loki did. 
there's no reason I spoon feed it. Just, just get it in there. Let's do this. And I think I'll, I'll, I think next I'll, I'll say do that. I'll say this because of the of the ensuing pandemic of the unscience believers. A lot of people are not going to be going out to theaters as we talked about. So I think this would be a surprising watch. People are going to be like, let me just I, see I just this think, fucking Marvel thing. Watching. Oh shit! People didn't. I see. Yeah, people didn't watch. Uh, what's this? The one Amazon Prime. Uh, Invincible. Invincible. It, it did, didn't draw those kind of numbers. It, it's, it did. It, that's why they get picked up for two seasons. Because it, 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 did, it did better numbers, numbers than they expected. But not the numbers that did, like the boys draws, for example. I, I, well, because well, because yes. it's animated. But, 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 but Invincible, is, it, it hits you in the face. They don't they, they don't, they, they don't feed you. Like, hey, bam, first episode, this is what it's about. Oh, shit. If, Come I'll, with I'll say if, if people were going out more, I, you're right. I think this would not get a very high viewership. Because people are actually staying in more because of all the crazy shit that's going on outside. I think it's going to start to pick up. It's going to be one of those slow burns. Maybe. But I, 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 have, I, have a, I have a really a good like, feeling. People just don't like animation. And not, not, this could have been the greatest episode of all time. And I could have said, I would have said the same thing. I, people still not going to watch it. I'm just telling you, based on the numbers that Invincible's getting, and based on what's going on with the world, where people are going to have to stay home a little longer because of just their own concerns, I think this is going to be a, one of those slow burns that when they hit like episode like five or six. You're going to see a lot more people talking about it. And it's going to be surprising Maybe. because we're like... It's possible, I, 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 but it's not going to draw numbers yeah. at WandaVision, local. Oh, no, it's not, not going to... That, so that's what I'm higher, saying. So, so it's, I'm oh, saying it's gonna, but I think it's going to be higher than you expected, but, 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 a good pers- but not... A, uh, no, I agree with you. It could be high, it could be the highest anime show of all time in Disney, but that, that may mean 50% of the audience that these other shows get, which means right, right. a lot of casual fans aren't going to watch this. Maybe a few are, but as a whole, well, then I, so it's like, why, why cater to a small percentage? The majority of people watching this are diehards. Oh sure, that's it. Anybody else is just they trickle in. That's great, but it's not going to get Loki numbers. It's just not. I will say this though. I I heard rumors that Captain Carter is going to appear in Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Wouldn't surprise me. When yeah. when that movie comes out, people are going to follow back. So I think it's going to be it's going to have like a second round. And I've also heard that from the uh, from the executive producer and the head writer of the show that they are actually going to bring Captain Carter in for several episodes. In this season and in season two, so she's going to be sort of like the, our our touchstone character. Where every few episodes, we'll see her on a new adventure. So you're going to see her get her in getting crazier and crazier adventures. But I feel like you, this is just their first outing, and they're just kind of showing you like, look, this is how a multiverse works. This one change did this. Now let's see what else happens. And I think it's going to get crazier and crazier as you go on. I think so too. Like I said, just for the first episode, it was, it was all right. It was fine. Nothing to get too uh, excited I, I said, about. The animation I, was no, good. It, and it was, it it was very ch- shell-shaded it, kind of style. I like that. So. It didn't change the world for me. No. But like I said, the the main thing it did, it made me realize how much I miss a good Marvel movie. Because for 20 minutes, I started to feel like I was watching a Marvel movie. And then it ended. I was like, okay. But, you know, what if comics were always usually... And up until recently, they were like done in one single episode, single issue stories. Mm-hmm. So to me, I was like, okay, that's how they did it in, in the books. Sure. So, but uh, I, 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 it definitely gave me like, like, oh shit, this is this, this could be it. Uh, and so I feel like the more it goes along, the more that feeling is gonna just be well, around. I mean, and the second one I heard goes a little more off the reservation, which is like cool. what, what I'm looking for. So I mean, that's what right. I, was, I was told. So let's see. But I'm, and I don't. Well, I, well, you know the premise of the second one. I guess I don't want to spoil anything. Unnecessary, I, but I, I don't want to say okay. anything because I want people to yeah, see it. Right. So we'll, yeah. we'll keep it mum, but it does yes. the idea behind it seems a little more out right. more interesting yeah. than, than this. And I think it's going to deviate, especially a lot when they more start going into the space stuff and everything. Right, so, yeah, exactly. that's good. Yeah. So, I'm, I'm, I'm this next episode will be more telling what I think the series is probably going to be, I right? So, anyway, um, I heard a third one's you know in between in, in terms of the first and second one. Um, uh, for, there's, for there's, been, there's, there's been st- stuff they've shown in trailers that are beyond those three episodes. That right. just for what I've seen in the, on the trailer looked amazing. What and does it Cap- look I can't wait for that one. <laughs> well, not even that one, but like there's a, there's one where it's like Captain Carter, uh, uh, the the dark evil uh, Doctor Strange, and they're surrounded mm. by an army of oh, Ultrons. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. that shit looks bananas. So yeah. if you want to see crazy, like it's there. Just give it time. You no, know I hope so. Yeah, but I just want to deviate from the story. Don't just give us like Ultron remade, like like they did with this one, right? Like really deviate right. from what we know, right? Yeah, really get crazy and crazy. Right. Like I said, yeah. I think this is like this is just the, this is just your first date. You're getting to know the person. It's not even a date. You're meeting for coffee, and then maybe Sometimes episode two is the date. You close a so. deal on that first date or what? I'm just, uh, just listen. I, I I congratulations for having that amazing <laughs> game because I. <laughs> The only thing a coffee date's ever giving me is I need to go to the bathroom immediately after. Uh, never, want, never want to do this, but you know, sometimes you have to. Um, <laughs> so let's 
obviously, well, well, obviously, what, what I'm gonna keep watching. It's a, it's a good show. Sure. Definitely watch it. Um, yeah, definitely watch. But then, I think the next one, the next one, will have a lot more to chew on. So, but that sure. being said, we'd have a lot more to chew on in another show, which surprised you that you didn't mention earlier yeah. that's coming out. And I was surprised about three episodes. I was expecting only one. And they Me dropped, too. Yeah, and they dropped uh, three episodes of Titans that came back on HBO Max today. Um, which now, obviously, I think all things the show people talked about because again, it was on the app, Dis- the right? Disney app. I mean, the DC app. The DC right? app. Yeah. So you got the Doom treatment, but uh, I think this is, right. this is a little more mainstream because it's it's more of a, the casual audience, I think, than Doom Patrol is. Um, I, I've been a fan, and not a great fan of the other first two seasons. Um, I thought the second, the one, first season was a little bit of a slog for me. It, I was it, like, it, oh, it was. Right. I was like, eh, second right. was better. And yeah, second was better. Second was better by by far because I think we get more Batman in there. It's just more interesting with Batman. Uh, it yeah. just is. And I think that's why this season started off. I've seen the first two episodes. I didn't see it there. I know you've seen all three, and I'll let you talk about it. I saw three, yeah. yeah. But the first two, I did great, man. I really liked what I saw here. Yeah, I, I was really I was did. very yeah. impressed. Yeah. Um, in, in terms of, of like production value and pacing, I thought it was really good. Yeah. Uh, my biggest complaint with the series as a whole okay. has, and it's always been, is that, that as cool as it is and as fun as it is to watch the Titans, it's very tricky to make you give a shit about a show about the Titans when, like, Batman is just off camera. Like, he's just there. Like, I would rather watch Batman all day, every day. So, like, hey, look, it's 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 Robin and his super team. Like, that's cool. But, like, Batman's right there. That's just true. go, go, go. So, so, and I feel like this show kind of, like, this season kind of addresses that and creates a situation to kind of push him off mm. uh, of, of the series. Are we uh, are we spoiling here or not spoiling? No, I mean I, I'm not saying how and why. I said it creates okay, so, a situation. So no spoilers. I just want to. So I don't no spoil spoilers. Anything. Yeah, okay, this one enough. we're not gonna spoil because yeah. there's it's three episodes and it's just not enough people watch it. I would rather them kind of come in by next fair episode. Enough. We'll talk freely about it because you have the third episode too. We can kind of go more into it. Sure. Um, but they do they they create a situation to address the this is why Batman isn't here right now, and it works, but it doesn't. The, their Batman has always felt inconsistent to me, you know, especially like with the end of season one where it looks like Batman's kind of gone dark side and everything. And then everything with they, they do in season two was kind of like a, it was more Titans focused. And, and this one, the first two episodes, uh, they do kind of address the Batman issue and they kind of explain why he's not there. It didn't feel like that Batman was acting very Batman to me. Um, so that was my only, my, my one big complaint, his, like what his choices were and his I, attitude. I kind of like, I like, I like the choice. It's just interesting because we haven't really seen that before. Um, yeah, well, but well, it's, it's, well, it's, it's, I don't, it's I don't want to spoil it. We've seen it one instance in the comic. I don't want to say it because it's a spoiler, but. Yeah, but you said the comics, if, if you yeah. want to bring like show, the correlation between well, the two, the, that's the, fine. The, 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 what he did that has happened once in the comics, but that kind of, kind of like a. A one-off, what the kind, Joker a one-off did. kind of thing, right? Well, what I don't the want to Joker say, did. I, no, what Joker did, the yeah, the, right? right. What Batman did after that, that that um, that, that causes yes, him to leave has yes never and been no. right. I, but I, you know, yes I'm just saying no. it hasn't been done to that effect. But either way, but that was cool. I like that. I was. It, it just the world's more interesting when it, during Gotham. It just is. I mean, we got. More I mean, Arkham, yeah, obviously, we, we got Red Hood who's introduced in in, in the show. There's so many cool. Vi- um, like I, I, I you know, what is in this? Th- yeah, Scarecrow's in it. Which, by the way, that's another problem I had is that out of all the rogues gallery guys you could get for Batman, and was like, we're not gonna go into spoilers, but I'll dance between the raindrops mm-hmm. on this one. Uh, the position that they place Scarecrow in, I can name you two other characters that would be better than. The scarecrow. So I don't know why you would do the scarecrow. And his attitude. I think isn't... I know one of them too, but I won't say it, but yeah. And and his and his attitude uh is is not very scarecrow y. Like like Jonathan Crane, uh I feel like Nolan's Jonathan Crane is much more on where Crane should be versus their version of Jonathan Crane. You see what I'm saying? Like I always said, I don't mind them taking creative liberties and giving us a different interpretation. I'm fine with that. I don't have to see the exact I, version of the character I've seen or read about. I will so, say... I'm okay with I will that, say, But I get it. If you're, if you're okay with that, I will say this. The end of episode three, which you have not seen, mm-hmm. there is a big twist at the end where they take a liberty with a character that has not been taken in the comics. Interesting. All, that's all okay. I'm going to say. Okay. So did, be, did you be like aware that? of that. Did you like that? It surprised me. And okay. it, it made me go, oh, shit. And I always told you, if you can make me go, 
oh shit or wow, I like it okay. because sometimes you you, may, you you might do sort of character. And I'm like, what the fuck? And right. then you don't want me to go like, well, ah, stupid. No, of but like, if you, what do we go? Oh shit! Like you, as surprising as it is, as a comic fan, I feel like I know the parameters of what to expect. And so when you kind of like surprise me that you're willing to do certain things with characters that I was not expecting, uh, and you didn't completely turn me off, I'm in. I'm, I'm cool yeah. with it. No, I, I like, like but, the tone. And and, and I'll, I'll ask you a quick question since one stuff sure. compared to comics. Barbara Gordon is not a spoiler. We know she's in it. Yeah. Um, what happened to her? I won't say because I don't know if it's a spoiler, but what happened to mm-hmm. her and her situation? Is well, that, man, it's it, season it, two. You, you can talk about that. That's kind of reference to season two, right? It, well, I don't remember season two, to be honest with you. So, I, but in but, comics, but, but did that happen? That she well, I say because whatever it is, but she got right. shot by the Joker and she's in the wheelchair. Right, she got she got in in the comic book. It's called the Killing Joke. The Joker shoots Barbara Gordon, oh, who's Batgirl. Right. There you go. Okay. And 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 then because she get she got shot in the spine by the Joker, she can't be Batgirl anymore. So she becomes an information broker for Batman, and she goes by the name the Oracle. But she now, but she walks. Oh no. And now she walks, but okay. she went for like. 20 years in a wheelchair okay. in the storylines and then when when they rebooted the, the the dc universe they said that the bullet grazed her spine so she had to like do like physical therapy for a couple of years and now she's back to walking now she's back to being Batgirl. Mm-hmm. Okay. but uh they are kind of doubling down with like no this is the more the killing joke darker aspect of what dc's history used to be like and so they kept her on the wheelchair now uh, this is not really a spoiler. It is a little bit, but it's not about her, just her position. In the series, she's now the new Commissioner Gordon. Right, Gordon, that of which, or something. Exactly, yeah. which is something that they kind of did in Batman the Lego Movie. <laughs> and they also did that in Batman Beyond. But it's never happened in the comic books. Barbara Gordon has never become mm-hmm. a cop. She's been in Batman Beyond and in Batman Lego Movie. She's become the new Commissioner. Gotcha. But so they're, So it's weird that they're kind of like, leaning on some things and kind of like taking other things that are just like a cartoon continuity or something like that. So it is a little bit of a hodgepodge of a, of a little stuff like that. If you're a fan of the original Teen Titans cartoon and Teen Titans Go, one of their bad guys is in the first episode. And it took me a second to realize who it is. And I was like, oh, okay. oh shit, because yeah. I'm used to seeing him as like as like 12. So I'm like, right. I'm like oh, cool, is that guy? <laughs> so I'm not going to, but it's there and we'll talk about it more next week. Yeah. But like, uh, but overall, like uh, I, I, I really dig the, uh, like the costumes have gotten so much better. Oh my god, yeah, by far, yeah. so yeah. much better. And uh, uh, I still feel like sometimes they 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 curse just to show you, hey guys, this isn't a kid show. And, and, uh, and agreed, uh, there, yes, they do, you know, sometimes I a, drop a, a word bit. here and there, but and listen, sure. I I curse like a sailor, so I love a good fuck here and there. Who doesn't? But so, it almost sounds like. The script is written by like a fourteen-year-olds who are like, like, "Oh man, our parents are around." They just say "fuck" as many times as possible because they're adults, so it totally sounds real. I'm like, does it? Does it sound real? It, it, I feel like you're trying a little too hard, but overall, it is a fun show. Uh, if I had to compare what I liked from the two series of What If and, and Titans, I liked What If more than Titans, but Titans is still good. It still has a, a, a couple of things that I'm not 100% on, but it is an enjoyable show. It definitely keeps my interest going. Uh, the production value has gotten so much better. Uh, and and uh, I'm actually interested about what's going to happen next, which is the key of any series you're going to do. You know, that Can you make somebody come back for the next episode? And they clearly did that. Uh, if I had to compare it between uh, uh, Titans and Doom Patrol, Doom Patrol, way better show. But Titans is still a good show. But if I had to... I would say uh, right now uh, it'd be Doom Patrol, What If, Titans. Uh, all are good, just some are a little better than but others. O- overall, I mean, it's too soon for What If. It's only one episode, so I, whatever. It's just too soon to say to put, rank that show. But that Doom Patrol out of the three is the far superior show. Even oh yeah, without, absolutely. Without question. absolutely. Titans again. I've never been a huge. I've been a fan. I watch it. It's good. It's like, it's like, like the second season was really good, and I think this was starting off better than the other two. This is probably the best three episodes of the of the well, of all three seasons put together. Like they're the the stories are really tight, especially if you've watched all three seasons. Everything makes sense in terms of character development and relationships. Um, there's no part of it except for the Batman stuff that made me go, "Ah, oh, you really wouldn't do that." Uh, Look, Batman. Once you get past Batman to that, has to go because, it's, uh, yeah, it's Captain Friend Zone. He got yeah, to go listen, finally hook I up with Khaleesi finally because man, it's, it's, he's about due. <laughs> <laughs> 
is got it. He's about to do it. Come on, man. Um, so I get it. I get it. has got the gray. Uh, <laughs> Gotham, Mother Dragon. Uh, choice is yours, but... Uh, but no, but uh, I guess I didn't mind that the Batman stuff, and, and it's a it just seems better when they're in Gotham. It just it just does for whatever. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. So San Francisco feels too safe. Yeah. In Gotham, you feel like you're gonna die right. every minute, the, the and that's the weight there than than it ever has. So much so, better, and and it can stay more grounded as a result. Yeah, so, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And, and 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 you know what's crazy too? The acting is probably the best it's been from all three seasons. Like, if that, like season one, they were kind of trying to get to know who they are sure. as characters. Even the actors are kind of like, so how does this work exactly? Season two, they got a little bit more of a flow. They introduced more characters. This one, the, a lot of those characters from from season two are been scaled back. It's more of a very more core team and, and for these first three episodes. They're probably bringing more people as the series goes on. But um, uh, everyone now feels very comfortable being who they are. Like, when 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 Nightwing shows up, when Starfire, even when when uh, well, I got one of the weakest parts of season one, which is the whole Beast Boy situation. Beast Boy in these three, like super he, fun. He did something. Yeah. Like, oh, the beginning scene. I was like, finally, <laughs> three years. Now he's now he's almost worthwhile. Almost worthwhile. Not quite worthwhile. He's, he's getting there. It's getting a there. huge and improvement it, from what we've seen from him the last two seasons. He, oh, so <laughs> such a big a huge. And you know, I I. Uh, uh, big shout outs to Crypto. Uh, you know, if anyone loves dogs and loves Superman, Crypto was in just season two and season three. That oh. dude is literally a Crypto speak amazing. It's oh, so like that was that really was my favorite part of the, all awesome. of episode yeah. one was Crypto speak. My only, I wish that the glass in the car would have shattered. That's my only fair, little like fair. to really show yeah. how loud it was. I would have liked just a glass of uh, the car shattering. Besides that, like that was my that favorite was cool. moment. Uh, the whole I didn't, thing. I didn't expect that. Yeah, like, super okay, cool. I thought he was gonna sick him or something. I don't know, but whatever. Me too. Oh, but he would have killed well, him. If right, but <laughs> if Griffith would have, it would have murdered. But in that show, it probably wouldn't have murdered. <laughs> I guess. But I don't think you could show it that bad. It's just no, like, it would have been like a, a, more more it suicide like a squad. A away, and then they would have cut away or something. I don't know. But whatever. Maybe I'm eating a bone later. No, it's messed up. But but that being said. We'll end it there, and obviously we'll talk we'll talk episode three um, next week and all that. And so yeah, ne- ne- next next yeah. next episode we'll do that. Uh, and 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 guys, uh, thanks so much for tuning in. We appreciate you guys uh, all your support. Don't forget, you can check us out on Instagram at at uh, Nerdsplaining Pod. You can check us out on Twitter at, at Nerdsplaining underscore. You can see all the audio episodes on ericdesilva.com, or you can check all our YouTube episodes on the Latin News Network. Uh, don't forget to, to always uh, 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 send us messages. Let us know what we want to talk about next. If you have questions that you agree with us, disagree with us, please let us know. We love hearing from you guys. We love talking about all these kind of stuff. And you have some specific stuff that you'd like us to talk about. We will talk about that as well. It's always appreciated. And uh, Jose, thank you so much for always being part of the show. And guys, also don't forget, if you uh, like, uh, 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 if you enjoyed today's show, don't forget to pick up my album, uh, Adorably Offensive, available on ericdesilva.com, Pandora, uh, uh, Spotify, uh, Amazon, Apple, the whole thing. I appreciate it. All that money goes to me uh, intoxicating myself. So Plus yet? very appreciative uh, about. Uh, um, not yet, believe it or not. Apparently, there's a language <laughs> issue because I like to say "fuck." I should be on like DC. The, That's what it is. I should be on like HBO Max. On Hulu. I, well, I'll take that too. Right, That's perfectly fine. I've been on Hulu before, but that's a whole other story. So, guys, but that is the show. Thank you so much for tuning in. As always, I'm Eric De Silva. This is Jose, Jose Romero, and we have been nerd explaining. And if you don't know, now you know. Peace. Peace.